What's going on guys? John here from John's Fishing Channel. Um, I am in Minnesota at Gander Mountain checking out those are ice fishing rounds, but all this stuff is ice fishing stuff. i um, be making my first ever ice fishing video for you guys, starting out with um, just kind of the basic stuff that you need and what you need to go out and go ice fishing. Ice fishing can either be very simple or very complicated, depending on where you're fishing and what you're trying to catch. So hopefully I have uh, just a great series coming out, fishing on the ice for you guys. I'm headed up to Lake Superior. Uh, gonna be fishing some small wilderness lakes in northern Wisconsin, hopefully pulling in crappy, a uh, crappie, crappie, sunfish, perch, um, maybe largemouth bass, walleye, northern pike, um, if we're lucky, a muskie, but it should be a really fun and exciting series. I'm very excited to get out on the ice and take you guys fishing with me. Here are your basic ice fishing rods. They're very short, they have a reel on them. Um, these are some tip ups which you just kind of set and you drill a hole, you set them even by yourself. They have all sorts of bobbers, hooks, and stuff like that. And I don't know, it's really, really fun. Um, ice fishing is challenging in its own way. You have to locate the fish, you have to find out what they're eating, you, know, you need a different set of equipment for it, but it should be a great trip and we should catch a lot of fish. Here are some ice fishing lures right here. Got all sorts of different size colored jigs. Come in two packs, single packs, and you can use regular hooks, but the jigs tend to attract a little bit more light and a little bit more fish. All right, so I stopped at Flea Market, which is just across the road from Gander Mountain, another huge supply store, all sorts of different stuff, and I got everything I need. Ice picks, even found those heated insoles in my size. So I got a pair for my dad for Christmas, and split that with my brother, and then I'm gonna use a pair because my feet get cold really easily. That's the worst thing about hunting and fishing for me in cold weather is my feet go and they get cold, and I'm like, screw it, I'm out of here, I'm going inside. But with these uh, heated insoles, that problem should be solved. I'm actually gonna be starting out my first video talking about my uh, preferred ice fishing setup. I got a couple different tools here. I'll go through them one by one and show you guys how to set up my uh, portable ice fishing clam shack. Like I said, I'll be showing you guys my uh, ice fishing setup that I'm using here in northern Wisconsin. This is my first ever, I guess, ice fishing video, so bear with me. It might be a little different. Um, but first things first, uh, I have the clam shack, which is actually really cool. It, it folds open and it has seats and it's all built into one sled so you can just drag it out uh, on the ice behind you, either behind a snowmobile, uh, behind a four-wheeler, or as in today's case, I'll just be dragging it out there manually uh, using my hands. But once you get out there, uh, this actually expands and you pull it open. As it's folding open, you expand these bars, which will be the crossbars for the top of the ice house itself. It's actually really simple to do. You know, I just expanded this whole thing in no time. And once you get it out onto the ice, you take a shovel um, and you shovel in snow all around the bottom of the shack, creating actually a pretty nice, warm, cozy, ice fishing hut. The seats fold up, um, all your gear sits down there, and once you get this all sorted out and kind of set up, you got your holes drilled, uh, you get to just sit in there, fire up the heater, get your bait ready, drop your hooks, and catch some fish. A little rope right here that I can pull the sled with. And it does actually slide fairly well over snow and on to ice. So I'm gonna walk this down to the lake. I'll drill my first hole about five feet from shore, measure it with my tape measurer, and then about every 15 to 20 feet, yeah, I'll drill another hole all the way out to where I'm going and constantly, constantly checking the ice depth. These are my ice picks. Uh, they come apart. Huh? I almost poked myself in the face. And you use those uh, to claw at the ice as you're trying to pull yourself out because if you do go through the ice uh, You can't really grab on ice or snow. You just there's nothing to grab so you take these picks You dig them into the ice you pull yourself out uh, You dolphin kick your feet together at the same time and you kind of wiggle out onto the ice and then you roll away from the hole uh, But I've never gone through um, I've known some people who have gone through because they just you know, they didn't check the ice like they were supposed to. They found a weak spot. You know, you never know. There is no such thing as safe ice. It's a saying in the ice fishing world. So you always want to be familiar uh, with the ice that you're going out, the water that you're going out, the lake. Uh, you know, you stay away from uh, narrow inlets and outlets where there's flowing water underneath because uh, flowing water tends not to freeze as fast as standing water. But I think we're going to be okay today. You know, I, I checked with all the bait shops, which is what 
uh, the DNR in Wisconsin recommends you do, you know, go to the bait shop, ask them, they know, and uh, they'll tell you that, you know, it's pretty safe. People are going out and just, you know, but I always, you always check, you're always safe. So that's what we'll be doing first today. So here we are, we're out on the ice. Lake is completely frozen. I mean, solid, solid ice. And I'm about 20 feet from shore. You know, it's really shallow right here. It's only about three feet. If I were to fall through, I go right down to my hips. Um, but this is where I'm gonna drill my first hole and check the thickness of the ice to make sure that it's as thick as it needs to be for me to walk out there. They say you need about four inches of solid ice uh, to walk out there for, and also do a four-wheeler. Uh, but a lot of people wait for six inches to do four-wheelers. Rangers, the four by fours, the bigger ones, they say seven to eight inches, uh, eight to 10 inches for a small car. And if you want to drive a big truck, you know, uh, yeah, like a Ford F-150, 250, whatever it is, they say you, they recommend over a foot. So I'm gonna check the hole here. And my final destination is right out here somewhere, which is the deepest point in the lake. And if you know what the thermal line, it's basically uh, the line where the temperature and the water changes from hot to cold. And the fish like to be down in that thermal line because the hot water will actually go down to the bottom of the lake and the cold water will come up to near the ice because it's colder. So the water flow kind of changes late in the fall and early in the spring. Uh, it's called the lake turning and it's actually, it's a really cool concept. So let's drill this hole and check this ice. All right, so I will be drilling my first hole with uh, the ice, the gas powered ice auger here. Flip her on, run the choke, just give it a pull. there is how you drill a hole in the ice for ice fishing with a gas powered auger and first things first take my tape measure here clean off a spot next to the ice so I can find the edge and then go down here and measure what the ice is It's about eight and a half inches, so I could actually bring a four-wheeler out here, uh, Ranger ATV if I wanted to, to this part. But like I said, I'm going to drill about five or six holes um, all the way out to my fishing spot so I can continually check the depth of the ice as I go. And here's what a uh, ice fishing hole looks like for all you people who have never seen one. I would take that scoop and scoop out all the ice in the hole you see right there. Um, I don't know if you can really see the depth of the ice on camera but it's pretty deep right there so moving on to another 20 feet drill another hole so I made it this is actually the like camera lens this is actually the hole that I'll be fishing out of I'm gonna set my tripod up got my hole set up I'll pull it right here next to the hole uh, get all the distance set up so the holes in a reasonable distance I set my uh, drilled about a half hole set your auger in it so it's standing upright not sitting on the cold snow and uh, yeah, now I'm gonna set up my shack. You have a lot of ice out here. There's nine inches of ice. I found a great spot. Uh, it's about 25 feet deep here. They say the panfish have been suspending over deep water. Uh, so this is where I'm gonna start. I've got my first hole drilled. I'll end up drilling one more. Uh, but I need to get my shovel out and clear a space where I can fish. Of course, I bought this cheap little shovel because it's light, but usually it does the job. And you're gonna want to kind of clean out your your ice fishing space. I call it a work space. Um, so we're just scraping a layer of snow and water off. That came out, and kind of want to save that stuff because we're gonna put it 
around the edge of the hole. Or the, we're gonna put it around the edge of the ice house. All right, so. Out. I got a little bit of space in between my actual uh, shack, which I'll be sitting on right here, and I want the hole to be right here where I can set a rod holder uh, and be able to fish it. So now that I've got that set up, I'll move my shack forward just a little bit. So I'll have one hole on one side and one hole on the other side. Here in Wisconsin, you can fish two holes. Uh, with two poles active and have one tip up, I believe. But I'm not doing tip ups today. I'm just gonna be fishing with two poles, two holes. So I'm gonna get my ice auger. I'm gonna drill my second hole right here. There we go. I try to keep my rope dry so it's not cold on my hands when I pull it. I'm pulling the rope out. You get it hot. Get it. Clear the work space. And you go ahead and shovel a little bit of this stuff right up to the bottom of your ice house. Kind of give it a little barrier. That way it'll seal off any airflow. Wind blowing underneath here. Jack, which is a good thing on really cold days. It's not that cold out here. You can see I'm in a sweatshirt and hat for 30 degrees. But if it was zero degrees or negative five degrees, I would be getting in this shack and have the heater running uh, a lot faster. All right, so. Now we're just gonna fold our shack up. We pull it open. Pull it up till it clicks. Fold it open. Pull it up till it clicks. This is a clam shelter. Uh, they're really handy. They're one of the first ever. The guy invented the clam was one of the first ever portable ice shacks to be ever, ever be invented by the guy. I forgot his name, but smart guy. All right. And then we just fold it down like this, and the shack is up. I've pinched, pinched the tent part in it. And that is what I will be fishing in. Of course, these are zip-up doors. I've got them both open right now because I was just inspecting stuff. But, uh, no, I've got everything that I need. I'll put my bait probably right there where it's pretty handy right next to the beer, which is an essential if you're of age and you're going ice fishing. Got pretty much everything that I need, though. Now I just need to secure the skirt of the actual house and you do that by just pulling it out like so just like that just set it right there so it's not sitting on the ground the whole time I'm out here now I take my shovel and I take this ex excess ice and snow pull my tarp up and I just take this stuff and put it right there and like I said I don't want it to you know absolutely sit there and freeze but this is pretty heavy duty tarp, this material that the ice fishing shack is made out of. So you just take all this stuff and put it all right there. Gotta pat it down with your foot just to seal the barrier. And then I go inside right here and I push out just a little bit. So I got a little extra room there. Put a little pressure on the barrier. On the inside, just like so, just like that, and that's how you seal the barrier. And I've got this handy dandy rod right here that unclipped. Oh, whacked me in the face! Ow, that was not smooth. And that goes right across the top, right there, like that. And that holds the 
entire top up. There we go. So that is my ice fishing setup. Got air pockets, got windows. Open those up, zip close the doors. Just like that. Turn the heater on. And once you turn the heater on in here, I mean, it warms up, I'll be able to sit here uh, in my long underwear t-shirt and you know, I got my boots with the heated insoles in them. That's pretty sweet. But here's the final product. You know, you just uh, make sure that's all airtight. We got that set up over there. And there's my ice fishing setup. Just like that. Pretty simple, really neat. Uh, clams are awesome. I'm gonna get in there and turn the heater on and start catching some fish. So the first thing I'm gonna do is scoop all this ice stuff out of my hole. Little ice shavings, they'll get caught on your line and you know all sorts of stuff because it's just cold ice sitting there floating. So kind of move it all around and scoop it out bit by bit. And you always want to keep your hole clean. Because the cleaner it is, the less it'll freeze over. There's the ice. And a, a little edge will kind of start to build up around your hole. And that'll keep the ice out once you get it out. So I got a little bit more to do on that one. Got a lot to do. We can see the difference of this and that. So just take that. Got a cold place for my beer. And then we just keep scooping and scooping and scooping some more. Some people will throw this stuff, you know, out the door or anything. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the nice thing about a portable shack is you could always just pick up and move if you're not catching any fish. You know, now that I'm set up out here, I can take my fish finder vexilar, which I forgot, but go drill other holes and see if there's fish down there. And there is. I just pull my shack right over there. Drill a couple new holes. All right, so that's pretty clear. I always keep that handy. And here is my ice fishing hole light which doesn't make a big difference during the day, but at night when it's dark out here, you set it right in the hole like that, and boy, let me tell you what, it just illuminates the whole thing. And there she blows. She's zipped up, the heater's on. Uh, I'm gonna rig up my rods and some bait, have a beer, and hopefully catch some fish. And you let the heater run on high for a few minutes, and it'll push out just a bunch of heat. I actually keep this flap open, uh, so I keep getting fresh air in here. I've got air vents. Um, but you don't want to as asphyxiate yourself uh, just burning that propane in here non-stop. But uh, I am ready to go, and hopefully we can start catching some fish. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for uh, watching this video, supporting me. I love sharing this stuff with you guys. So In the water, holy crap, I'm already getting a bite. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Something's on there just messing with it. Hopefully that goes down and I'll set the hook. Uh, the first line goes in the rod holder. Just got my minnow down to the bottom. Something's down there just messing with it. I think I'm gonna get a fish here. And oh yeah. Oh, come on. I'm gonna drop a wax worm down the other hole when I get a second here. But this is exciting. Hopefully there's a nice big crappie down there that's just gonna suck that minnow in and I set the hook and reel them in there. Uh, but that'll sit right there. I'll wait for it to go down. If it does, I'll reel it up and show you guys the fish, and then I'll get the head cam on, and we'll get some good footage. All right, so I got my first fish. Uh, it's a little perch. Not very big. Not really big enough to eat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put him back, but it's a pretty good sign that there's fish down there. I might move to a little deeper water. It's only about mm, 20 feet here. I'd like to be in maybe 30 feet, because the fish will suspend themselves in that deep water. But here's the first fish. Well, guys, thanks for watching this episode of John's Fishing Channel, Ice Fishing Edition. I really appreciate you uh, tuning in. I showed you how I set up my shack, how I go about uh, drilling my holes and finding my spot. Um, I'm just waiting here. Um, I'm on a couple fish. Uh, I will probably head back in, leave this set up, get the Vexar, come back out here, uh, and walking from my shack to drill new holes to find a little bit of deeper water. Uh, 
but that'll be in the next episode. So we'll hopefully we'll be catching some crappies, some sunfish, perch, walleye, northern trout, um, all sorts of cool fish coming up in the uh, the this series of ice fishing. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Share this video with your friends. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.